Tonight, Bose takes on Apple, Foursquare takes on Yelp, and Google takes on Science. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 137 for Friday, July 25th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place, get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up, Google has a new science project. It's called Baseline Study, and it will collect anonymous genetic and molecular information from 175 people and eventually thousands more to create a picture of a healthy human being. Baseline will amass a much larger and broader set of new data than existing medical and genomics studies uh, to help researchers detect heart disease and cancer earlier and focus on medical prevention uh, rather than treatment. Then Google will use its computing power to find patterns or biomarkers buried in the information. The hope is that these biomarkers can be used by medical researchers to detect any disease a lot earlier. Google says the information from baseline will be anonymous and limited to medical and health purposes, and that data won't be shared with insurance companies. Baseline is the latest project to emerge from Google X, which focuses on long-term risky initiatives that could have a huge impact on the world and ultimately Google's bottom line. Other so-called moonshots include self-driving cars, the glass wearable computer, and internet service delivered from high-altitude balloons. Ah, yes, a new lawsuit for Apple. Bose is suing Apple-owned Beats over patents related to noise-canceling headphones. Boys, Bose sorry, alleges that uh, Beats has infringed on five decades of research, development, and engineering of noise-canceling technology, and that its current lineup of these devices incorporates, quote, at least 36 U.S. patents and applications, end quote, which include 22 granted patents and 14 applications undergoing review. Beats products named as having infringed upon Bose's IP include the Beats Studio line. Bose is seeking from the court an injunction against continued infringement, a full account of sales of infringing devices, damages including court costs, determination that the infringement is willful, and upwards adjustment of damages accordingly and other relief to be determined in court. Do you have one of those grandfathered unlimited plans with Verizon? Well, get ready for some speed drops. Starting on October 1st, when the network gets crowded, Verizon will prioritize 4G customers who buy their data by the gigabyte over unlimited plan customers who fall into the top fifth percentile of monthly data usage. The top 5% is defined as customers who use 4.7 gigabytes or more of data each month. Verizon is currently finishing a big LTE upgrade, doubling or tripling 4G capacity in 350 markets and relieving its original LTE network of the rising congestion it was seeing in some major cities. However, a Verizon spokesperson tells GigaOM that the company decided to implement the new 4G policy this year in anticipation of future demand. And today, the U.S. House of Representatives passed legislation called the Unlocking Consumer Choice and Wireless Competition Act, allowing cell phone users to unlock their devices and switch from one carrier to another. The bill now goes to President Obama's desk. Currently, because of a 2012 decision by the Librarian, uh, Library of Congress, <laughs> obviously a typo there, uh, people who unlock their phones to switch between providers after their contract runs out are in violation of federal copyright law. The bill was introduced after a White House petition last year in which more than 114,000 people claimed the, two, the 2012 decision reduces consumer choice and decreases the resale value of devices that consumers have paid for in full. In December, major wireless companies reached an agreement to make it easier for people to use phones on other networks. Now coming up, sports loving robots. It's the thing. And after the break, Reed writes Selena Larson joins us to talk about the future of the mobile check-in. But first, let's talk about a free and secure tool. It's personal capital. It solves two barriers to growing your wealth. Number one, it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401k, bank accounts, all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. 
And number two is if you pay someone to manage it, you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, phone, or tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. Recently, Personal Capital announced its award-winning app with Android Wear, available for download in Google Play. It's a watch app that integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and gives users relevant and timely updates on their finances on the go. It shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. Here's what you do. To set up a free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me today is Selena Larson, journalist over at Rewrite. How's it going, Selena? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's good to have you on board today. Uh, now, Likewise. not too long ago, Foursquare announced changes with its location check-in service. It launched Swarm, of course, for those duties while promising to rebrand its core app as something along the lines of uh, Yelp, providing detailed listings of businesses, locations nearest to the user. Uh, now we're finding out a little bit more about Foursquare's redesigned service. So, Selena, what can we expect when their new app hits and when should we see it? Is that coming pretty soon? Yeah, so it should be uh, coming in the coming weeks. They did just launch a redesign, but they did not make the app available for download yet. It's kind of like giving people an, uh, a, a kind of keying them into what they can expect. And as you notice, um, Foursquare obviously just debuted a new logo as well. Mm -hmm. But the new Foursquare app is actually going to take in a lot of your location and past check-in data um, from its um, the other Foursquare app that it launched, Swarm, where now the check-in now lives. And it'll deliver you personalized recommendations on things that Foursquare thinks you'll like. So, for instance, um, if I get coffee a lot and I regularly check in at a coffee shop in San Francisco, if I go to Portland, uh, when I land, they'll be like, here are the most recommended coffee shops in Portland. So it's like really personalized recommendations as well as delivering you um, tailored suggestions on things that you'll like. Um, now... Of course, transitioning to Swarm a couple of months ago, and a lot of people just kind of had it built into their their daily usage habits uh, to pull out Foursquare when they want to check in. Now they, of course, have to do that through the Swarm app. Do we have any indication as to how that transition to Swarm has been for Foursquare's users? Are they using it as, as habitually as they were doing with Foursquare, or has it actually kind of hurt Foursquare to kind of pull the rug out like they did? Yeah, so according to Foursquare, um, they already have quite a few um, quite a few of their numbers that are using active check-ins are actually on Swarm. Uh, Foursquare is making the transition super easy. So when you go into Foursquare, if you're not really familiar with Swarm yet, you'll get a little notification that lets you kind of tap between the apps pretty, pretty efficiently and quickly. Um, and uh, according to Foursquare, I mean, the feedback has been pretty good. And just as a Swarm user myself, I've, I've never really been a fan of the check-in. I usually use Foursquare more for discovery personally. But, um, but the UI, the interface and everything is really straightforward and it's actually a very well designed app. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Foursquare faces even more competition. Uh, Google is pushing, has pushed actually an update to its Google Maps apps that does a lot of the same things that Foursquare is promising to do with its core app when those changes hit hit uh, the phones. Uh, what's, is there, are there any major differences between what Google's approach is and what Foursquare is promising to do here? So it's actually pretty interesting. I mean, Google Google has pulled a lot of the a lot of the details and a lot of what Foursquare promises to do and put it in Maps. And personally, as a Maps user myself, anytime I go to a new city or anytime, even on the weekends, um, I always use Google Maps to find out where I'm going. And I actually played around with the Ex Explore feature, and uh, I really liked it. I mean, it delivered it delivered some things within walking distance. I could set you know my um, what I was looking for. And according to Google, I mean, they kind of hinted towards uh, hinted that they are going to be using your location and check-in data to provide you more tailored, more 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 information that suits your likes and your dislikes and where have you been. So it's actually, it's pretty interesting. I mean, I think I think Foursquare has really hit on something that people really like with this um, discovery um, tailored towards your likes and your dislikes. So it's clear that Google Google's kind of taking a cue from them. Sure. And with increased competition, of course, you know, there's Foursquare, there's Yelp, there's a lot of companies kind of doing similar stuff and now big hitters like Google. Uh, in your opinion, do you, do you think Foursquare made the right decision to splinter their services into two different apps at this stage of the game? Was that, was that a good move for them? 
Um, I think that they're very clearly trying to go for two different services. Whether or not taking the check-in out of Foursquare was the right decision sort of remains to be seen. Mm-hmm. I know I've seen a lot of different tweets and some feedback on my on the post that I've written anyways that people are very, they're still trying to get used to the transition into Swarm. But I feel like people that use Foursquare exclusively for the check-in app uh, really needed a new place to go considering there's going to be so much more in the Foursquare app. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it, if it was the right idea. It seems like people that use Swarm just for checking in really like it, and um, maybe Foursquare just felt that it was there was just too much in one app, so they had to splinter up their services. Sure, sure. Well, Selena Larson, it's been a pleasure talking with you about all this stuff. Um, where can people find your work online? Yeah, so uh, I'm at readwrite.com. Uh, so please read us. It's a great site. I write there, obviously. And at, um, at Selena Larson on Twitter, please drop by and say hi. All right, excellent. Thank you again, Selena. We'll have you back soon. Thanks, take care. <laughs> take care. All right, and finally, doesn't it suck when a baseball stadium's empty during a baseball game? Kind of zaps the energy, don't you think? A Korean baseball team, the Hanwha Eagles, has invented a new way to improve atmosphere at their matches, bringing in a crowd of robot fans. Fans that aren't able to get to the stadium can control the robot over the internet. The robots can cheer, they can chant, they can perform the wave. Uh, maybe this is just what the Hanwan Eagles need. In the past five years, they have suffered more than 400 losses. So many that fans of the team are regarded with a degree of sympathy and have earned the nickname Buddhist Saints. Thank you very much, Brian. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.